Well, let's talk politics now. There are Republican caucuses in Washington state this weekend and, of course, Super Tuesday, just a few days away. And let's be honest, these last few months have been a roller coaster of a ride with fluctuating polls, sharp jabs traded over cable networks, and way too many presidential debates. So what are we left with now? Well, in the eyes of many, it's a field of candidates that very few people seem to be excited about. A former member of that field, Republican John Huntsman, who dropped out a few months ago, said this last week, said this last week about what needs to happen in the country. I think we're going to have problems politically uh, until we get some sort of third party movement or some alternative voice out there that can put forward new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, that ain't going to be me, uh, by the way. I know the next question. I'm not interested in that. But someone is going to step up at some point and they're going to say, we've had enough of this. The real issues are not being addressed. All right. So this is not a new concept, of course, but it's one that's often considered sort of out there, fringe. So what's it going to take to have a viable third party candidate? I've got Madison Rupert, editor of End the Lie. Hey there, Madison. In order to be a third party candidate, it would seem you need kind of an alternate set of values that you can actually defend. What do you think those values would be? Well, based upon the homogenous nature of the current political landscape, I think what we, the, the American people really need to see is a uh, a candidate who values the Constitution, who values our most essential liberties, which have been eroded over the past year at a pace which has never been seen before, along with an anti-interventionist, anti-imperialist, anti-neo-colonialist, and so forth, foreign policy, which uh, is not seen among anyone in the Republican field or Obama, of course, except maybe Ron Paul. He's the only person uh, who's putting forth a dialogue that differs at all from the narrative that we've heard from both sides for so long now. And the continuity of agenda that we've seen from Bush to Obama uh, has, in my opinion, disillusioned many Americans from the two-party system completely. So I think the only uh, viable, the truly viable alternative is someone who's presenting something that is completely absent from the platform of both the, the mainstream Republican and Democrat parties. Well, I think it's a good point. So, uh, you know, you brought up Ron Paul. Let's talk about him. He's running as a Republican. But uh, as you say, when it comes to the what, you know, what he's calling for, he's very, very different from um, any of those Republicans. I want to show you an interesting poll. This is a recent Rasmussen poll that shows if Ron Paul were to be the nominee, he could actually beat President Obama with 43 percent of voters surveyed choosing him compared to 41 uh, percent choosing Obama. I mean, what do you think of this? I think that is a completely viable poll. I think that is a, a very realistic finding because uh, when you look at Obama, you see someone who's made a lot of wonderful promises. His rhetoric is A plus, um, but when it comes down to it, what he is presenting is George Bush 2.0. Uh, he's continued to defend the war in this wiretapping. He signed the NDAA, uh, the, the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012, which contains the indefinite detention provisions, which Ron Paul has spoken against many a time. And uh, both Republicans and Democrats voted for that legislation. And Obama recently issued a, a presidential directive, which is a non-binding statement, uh, claiming that they wouldn't use the indefinite detention provisions against Americans. But when it comes down to it, I don't think Americans trust him to follow a non-binding agreement when he's broken every single one of his campaign promises. Whereas Ron Paul has been very consistent in his views, very consistent in his voting record. And I think Americans are more willing to trust Ron Paul. But Madison, we are talking about the viability of a third party candidate. Ron Paul is running as a Republican. I know um, in the past there's been some grumblings about whether uh, maybe he might switch and, and run as an independent, a libertarian. Um, but he, the fact is he's running as a Republican. What about somebody else? What, what if somebody else came into the race? I mean, what would it take? How would they differ themselves from Ron Paul, from the Republicans and from the president? 
Well, I think uh, likely a third party candidate would be very similar to Ron Paul in their views on foreign policy. Um, but when it comes to domestic policy, I think there could be a lot of difference there, especially in terms of how uh, Ron Paul might move towards the gold standard or, or something along those lines, how he would uh, cut a lot of the social safety net and so forth. But honestly, as we've seen, a lot of people have called it a two-party dictatorship in the United States because that's largely what it is. I think that is a very accurate representation because the money behind the Republican and Democrats it just dwarfs anything that could get behind a third party candidate. Well, let me and let me stop you there, Madison. Let's talk about the money. Uh, you know, people complain about candidates and about Congress, but the two party system now seems more than ever uh, that it will stay in place because of you say, like you say, the money uh, and of course the Supreme Court decision on Citizens United. Um, Forget a good candidate. It's going to take a lot of resources, i.e., money. I mean, don't you think that the chances have now diminished? Unfortunately, I think that is an accurate uh, representation. Um, but I, I believe that is partially why Ron Paul has decided to focus on uh, running as a Republican, because I think he's well aware of the fact that he probably wouldn't be included in a single poll if he was running as a third party candidate. And he's not included in a lot of the polls running as a Republican. So I think he realizes that a lot of people realize that running as a third in a third party now is a political death wish of sorts because you're just not going to get the money and you're not going to get the backing of, uh, of the, the big money players that you really need. And I find it very interesting that Ron Paul actually is getting a lot of money, not only, of course, from the military, but also from uh, some prominent investors like the one of the founders of PayPal. Um, so I, I really think a, a third party candidate running under a third party, perhaps as an independent or a libertarian and so forth, um, I think they realize that now with Citizens United, with super PACs and so forth, and the almost unlimited money at the disposal of the Obama campaign and the Romney campaign, um, it's just really, it, it would not be viable to run. It certainly is interesting when you take a look at the field and you take a look at just so far. Here we are in the very beginning of March. The role these super PACs have played in this election, I think we're only going to see it uh, getting bigger and more robust when it comes to that money. Madison Rupert, editor for EndTheLie.com.